Do you enjoy attending Zoom meetings in your pyjama bottoms and working from the comfort of your own home? Well, don't get too used to it. The new survey shows the majority of bosses plan to penalise workers who don't return to the office when they're asked to by withholding pay rises and promotions. This comes as Chancellor Jeremy Hunt says he wants office working to become the default in the UK. Well, joining me right now is specialist remote and flexible working consultant Marilyn Devonish. Marilyn, I've got to ask this question. Are you working from home? I am actually, I'm remote today. I've just arrived at the hotel All about right. seven minutes ago. A so hotel, definitely. I'm, I'm going to count a hotel as an office. I'm going to count that. All right, well, look, this survey, it's a poll of 150 bosses by accounting giant KPMG. And 83% of bosses express, they say, a likelihood of linking financial reward and promotion opportunities to a return to in-office working practices. Um, do you agree with that? Do you think... People who, say, who are told, we'd like you back in the office, oh, no, thank you, I quite like being able to walk the dog at two in the afternoon. Do you think they should lose out when it comes to promotions? I actually think that's absolutely outrageous. Now, let me answer your question. If I wasn't here today, I'm hosting a big event in London tonight, but if I wasn't, I would be at home doing this interview. My question to any of the bosses listening, is the information I have and the 23 years' worth of experience in remote work is that any less valid because I would be doing this from home? I don't think it is. I think it depends what the job is, doesn't it? Because I do part of my work from home. I want to be quiet and I want to be able to have different screens and, and focus on what I'm doing. I think it depends a lot on the sort of job. Um, but there is a big concern about people, you know, working as teams, exchanging ideas. The fact that someone will say, oh, let's have a 45-minute Zoom meeting when actually you could just pop round and go, you know, oh, by the way, Marilyn, um, is it OK if I do that? that for yeah, great, lovely, thanks very much. Done, move on. It's slowing people down. People aren't getting to know their colleagues. There's a lot... There's there's a lot of learning that goes on in offices. You know, I'm 55 years old. I still learn from other people. When I was 20, I definitely need to be around people to learn from. How is anybody who's coming out of school or coming out of uni now supposed to learn on the job if they're sitting at home in their PJs? Sure. Well, I personally am not advocating for everyone work from home 100% of the time. I really thought we've gotten to the stage now after three years of people having to work remotely, not through choice initially, I really thought we had come to the stage now where hybrid working was an acceptive mode of operating. So it's not saying you're never going to be in the office, although I know there are jobs where people would prefer to be remote because of office politics and all of the things that come with that. But I would say, of course, if someone is a new starter, get them into the office, teach teach them the ropes, introduce them to everyone. But I really think the hybrid and giving people the opportunity to work from home when it will be conducive to do so is a good idea. But here's the, come on, here's the thing. The everyone was saying in 2020, oh, this is wonderful, it's revolution, let's carry on with it. I, I've said, I was saying from very early on, this ain't going to fly, it's not going to work, people are doing absolutely nothing. We know people are doing absolutely nothing a lot of the time uh, because you can't get anything done. People don't answer the phone, they don't answer emails, nothing, you, no one deals with anything at local councils, you can't get a passport, you can't get a driving licence, um, home office can deal with only one you know, migrant uh, asylum case uh, a week on average. If it was working so efficiently, none of that would be happening. Now, it depends where you are looking because there have been surveys done which shows that efficiency, productivity has actually improved. Now, if work isn't being done, that isn't necessarily a function of just remote working. I would say that's a function of management. It's a function of leadership. Well, you can't it's manage a someone if they're at home. You can't walk past their desk and see that actually they're watching something on Netflix. Do not be mistaken, but people will be at work playing Sudoku, solitaire, all sorts of things with their making sure that nobody is behind them. That is not something that is just no, that's relegated true. to But that's not an argument home. for working from home when there's no one to see over these things. I mean, OK, what about the jobs of people who can't work from home. And, and again, this is one of the things that came up in lockdown. You know, people say, oh, people are locked down. And, and I remember people around my area going, oh, well, the, the laptop class. They go, oh, isn't it awful? Isn't it awful, these people are on the streets? Oh, what? Well, all the people who work in the supermarket or work in the restaurants that you're getting your deliveries from, um, and, or, or the Amazon delivery drivers, oh, you're fine for them to go to work so they can let you go to work. The reality is, you know, the middle classes locked down were able to work from home. The working classes basically brought them things. If you're a waiter, I mean, there's lots of jobs I've done. A waiter, a barber, bar, you know, you're a cleaner. You, you can't say, oh, I'm going to clean your home 
from from home there's a, you can't do that if you're a taxi driver there were, you work in a factory you make things you deliver things there are so many jobs that require people to be there and the reality is a lot of those jobs especially in the um, industries like this you know the, the service industries and the uh, the hospitality sector those jobs are collapsing because you haven't got people in their office saying hey i'll pop for a sandwich or hey let's all go out for a drink this evening and the world changes. Like, if I went out and said to somebody of a certain age, like, let's say somebody in their teens or 20s, I said, you know, a slide rule is, they would probably laugh at me and go, sorry, what's that? Times change. Things evolve. The world is changing. Things are evolving. Is it for the now, better, Now, if you... The, change is change. Regardless of whether you think it's for the better or not, things will naturally evolve and change. The world will change. The world of work will change. We're no longer in the what you'd call the industrial revolution. We have to just kind of accept that and get with the program. Now, if you want a job that is remote, there is no point taking a job of driving a truck or picking and delivering because you absolutely already know that job yeah. requires you to be on site. So it's sort of saying, well, some people can't work from home. I don't think that's the argument. Okay. But lots of, I, I know lots of bosses direction. who we say are... they want their people back in the office, but people, A, they refuse. It's all that HR is now, hey, if you really want a job that's growing, HR is the business to be in. But also, um, they, if they're advertising for someone new to join, they're basically saying, we don't get any respondents unless we say you can work from home two or three days a week. And, and as I love is Lord Digby Jones, former boss of the CBI, who says, fine, if people want to work from home, OK, but not on a Monday and not on a Friday. That sorts the week from the chaff, doesn't it? For me, the one thing I will say, it's about the work, not about where you are doing the work. Because if it was about where I was, I would have to be in the studio with you yeah. right now. But if bosses thought that people were working more efficiently, they weren't having the travel time and therefore they were actually able to concentrate completely on their work, if they thought that, they wouldn't want all these people back in the office. They'd be going, brilliant, we're saving all that money on all these massive big office buildings that cost us a fortune to heat and to clean and, and to look after. Brilliant, let's have a load of people at home. If it was so good and it was working so well, why wouldn't they want it to continue? One of the things I'm going to say, and I said this 23 years ago, I started doing this work in 2003, going into organisations to write and implement remote working policy and strategy. One of the first things we'll be talking about in terms of CEOs, leaders, frontline leaders, team leaders, managers, is you need to know how to manage your staff. You need to know how to scope the work. You need to to know how to manage the work regardless of whether someone is sitting in front of you or whether they are in a remote location because when you can manage and you know what needs to be done and you have your metrics there's no question now about what's being done is it being done how is it being okay. done because you're going on the metrics all right it's then. not about where that person you put, is sitting no, you put up a great defense you haven't changed my mind you say times change it evolves <laughs> no it, it was forced on us uh, by by the lockdown policies but marilyn devonish so appreciate you joining us from a hotel but it would have been from home otherwise thank you very much indeed thank i'm you. glad she's got out and about um sam armstrong with me um again i love this when i'm talking to someone and, and you know not on camera whoever is my guest here and they sit there you you're a spitting tap come on off you go nothing in this country <laughs> works anymore and is it any wonder that the very bodies that are working worst government departments on a given day more than 50 percent of the civil servants in the foreign office department for environment food and rural affairs number of other departments none of whom work all of whom have atrocious customer service are sat at home watching netflix eating and they bad are, food. I mean, lots, they of people are. Look, look, lots of people are working uh, look i've got to be honest i had a job when i worked from home on a monday on a sunday newspaper there was no one to even speak to in the office um there were quite a lot of trips when i was working from the zoo with my with my then then one year old I'm not gonna lie so that's why I feel like yeah really but I've done I've done a lot of working from home but I when you know freelance journalism I've got to be honest with you I mean I enjoy a bit of time from home but mostly I like being around other people have that spark have that laugh the in jokes that it's and again learning from people and so many managers are just saying look you know they want to be able to know their team and get to know them so much of work I mean it used to be before they happened on the internet where you met your other half who you ended up marrying you met them in the office and these people have no answer, no answer whatsoever for how young people are going to be able to train, yeah. to develop, to build their skills, to do all of the and things. And they're spending so much of their life on screens already. And then basically just sitting at home all day, well, most days, I just don't think that's a life. I don't think that's a fulfilling life. I think even, we know it's physically unhealthy for people, disability to just, you know, you get up, you know, you know get to the car, walk around, go... 
I, I just think it's so much, there's so much about the world of work that isn't just what you get done in the working day.